Whether you're new to Football Manager or you've been playing for years, there's a good chance that you're kind of set in your ways in terms of how you play the game. But is that necessarily the best way? There's a good chance that that's not the case. Today, I'll be telling you guys why you might have been playing FM wrong the whole time. That's right, today's video is going to be focusing on those mistakes that a lot of people are making, the misconceptions that people have about FM, and just generally the things that are missed when people play the game that can elevate their experience to another level, get them a few extra extra wins, win them another trophy, whatever it might be. Hopefully, once you watch this video, you'll have learned something new. If you did know everything in this video, then guess what? You're a football manager expert and congratulations to you. But if you get any use out of it, then please go ahead and smash that like button for us. Or if you just want to be nice, hitting that like button really, really does help the channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then hit that button as we get close to FM24. Last thing, if you want to check out my channel, you can find that link in the description too. We have some football manager rebuilds over there, as well as some YouTube shorts about Wonder Kids you might not have heard of. With all of that done, we can take a breath, we can get into it. Let's take a look at the first thing that you might have been doing wrong in Football Manager. Now this video is going to cover everything from huge conceptual Football Manager things like the first one we're going to approach to little buttons that you can click that will make your game easier. But let's start off with one of the conceptual things. Now this is something that I covered a lot in FM22, a lot on FM21, but I haven't really spoke too much about in FM23. We've mentioned it in the odd video, but that is all about star ratings and not trusting them. Now if you're an experienced player of the game and you know this and congratulations but to most people that come along to Football Manager I know I was the same when you're used to something like FIFA where you've got an overall rating for every player it's very clear how good everyone is you want to see something equivalent to that in FM and often people assume that these star ratings are the FM equivalent of a player's ability but it's really not what if I told you these star ratings are pretty false, maybe aren't to be trusted, and can really fluctuate from game to game about how good a player is. A lot of people don't realise that and don't understand why suddenly their player has got an increase in star rating or it's been lowered massively. Well, I'm going to explain it now. So the first thing, star rating, should you trust them? What it will do is give you a pretty accurate judge of who the good players in your team are, i.e. these guys here for us have got the highest star rating, so I can assume that they're the best players. And for getting a general judge of your player's ability, star ratings are fine, but to to judge a player completely on star ratings is wrong. To see two left backs, maybe one's got three stars, one's got two and a half star rating. Does that mean the three star ability player is a better player? Not necessarily, because the star ratings are made up of a few different things. Star ratings don't just take into account a player's ability. They also take into account a player's form. So if your player is playing well, you'll often see their star ratings rise and then suddenly drop off again. If they're, say, not scoring goals anymore, if they're a striker, let's say, you might see a bit of a fluctuation there. Star ratings are also dependent on other players at the club so you couldn't have a full team of five star players every player is being ranked according to the others so Duke here at the bottom a two star player is being compared to our best player in Leonardo Macias here at Aberdeen this is an old save I used to play with just using it as an example here but you can see that there's a difference in those players Macias is seen as the best of the best and everyone else is being compared to him in comparison but as I mentioned these star ratings aren't just about ability if we take someone like Alfie Bavage here for example something that's classing towards his star rating here is the fact that he counts towards our squad registration rule because he's homegrown. Does that mean he's a really good player? No, not necessarily. It just means he's homegrown at the club and for that reason we can give him a little increase in the star rating to show that he is a beneficial player to have around. So don't trust everything you see about these star ratings. They could be inaccurate, but the biggest thing that could make them inaccurate is the person giving your star rating to you. Now these aren't just generated by the game. It's actually your staff member's opinion of your players that you're seeing here. So you can see if we go into the overall report, Ian Wone is given as the report here saying that Macias is a five star player. It looks like Ian Wone is the man that provides us with all of our star ratings. But if we take a look at Ian Wone, he's only got 15 for judging player ability and 15 for judging player potential, which is not the best that we've got at the club. So in theory, if we change this to someone with 20 or 19 judging player ability or potential or something higher than Ian Wone, we should get a more accurate representation of the players at the club. Let's use this guy instead, Alistair Stevenson, who's got better judging ability and judging player potential. To change who gives you your coach report, you want to go to responsibilities, down to advice and reports, and then in provides player report section here, we're going to change this to our head of youth development, Alistair Stevenson. That will refresh. We can hit confirm now. And then if we go to our squad, you'll see the star ratings are different now. Macias is being given five stars. I believe we've got an extra four star player here in Paolo, who was ranked as a three star player beforehand. And this is now a slightly more accurate representation of our 
player's ability. So the thing that people are doing wrong when playing FM with star ratings is trusting them a bit too much and taking the word as gospel. There's a good chance if you haven't updated that responsibility, some old outdated staff member at your club is giving wrong opinions of your players and maybe causing you to buy new players when you didn't need them or sell players that are actually way better than you thought. If you're going to judge a player, don't do it on star rating, do it based on their attributes for the position or the role that you intend to play them in. So that's one of the big conceptual ones out the way. So don't worry, not all of them are going to be that long, but the next tip is all about playing time with your players. When you sign a player, when you give a player a new contract, you have to tell them what kind of playing time they're going to get, whether that's as a star player at your club, a regular starter, important player, squad player, etc, etc. You get the idea. Now I've spoken about an element of this before in a previous video, but I'm going to give you a bonus tip here that I didn't know until the other day. But let's cover the mistake in general first. One thing that a lot of people are doing are giving too many players a high playing time percentage. Here we're okay at Aberdeen. We've got four star players, a few regular starters, one important player. That's all right. But if you're signing a lot of players and giving them star status, important player status, there's a good chance somebody isn't going to get the game time they want. They'll then get upset. That will cause a dynamics issue at your club. Your players will get upset and they won't be playing as well as they could do. And that can really make the difference between wins and losses. Dynamics are hugely important in football manager. So the first part, the conceptual bit, is when you sign players, try and think about the balance of your squad. Don't have too many players that are star players. Don't have too many that are important players. You get the idea. You don't want to have too many players with too high expectations, not enough game time to give them that are going to lead to issues in the future. But there's an extra tip that can help you out here. You might see every now and then throughout your season, you'll get an email to your inbox that will say we should adjust XYZ players playing time to squad player or fringe player because they're not getting the playing time that they expect. You click a button and that message gets sent to the player. They'll either get upset or they'll be fine with it. It's something that I didn't know you could actually manually change though. Maybe I'm just being an idiot, but I was always waiting for that email to come around until the other day where I saw this button. So let's take Duke for example here. He is ranked as a squad player at the club, but that's because he was a squad player when we gave him a contract a while ago. Now he doesn't necessarily have the ability to be a squad player anymore. Realistically he does, but let's imagine we're going to tell him that he's only going to be a fringe player now. That's all he's good enough for. We need to try and figure that out because maybe he isn't good enough to get squad player game time anymore. To change that manually without having to wait for the email, you got to go to overview, then to happiness of all places. There you can change his playing time. He's very happy with the amount of playing time he's given, but his expectation really is that he's only going to be an emergency backup. So he really doesn't think he's good enough to be a squad player. So if we change this all the way down to say fringe player and then click change playing time, is he upset? No, we don't get any kind of upset from Duke here. We managed to lower his playing time, which means he's going to have less expectations about the amount of time he's going to get on the pitch and therefore a lesser chance of being upset. If you've got a player who's been around the club for a while, has the wrong playing time, maybe he was a star when you signed him, but now he's a squad player, try changing it. It might go wrong. It might work. You've got to judge each situation on an individual basis, but there you go. Did you know you could go in and manually change a player's playing time expectations just like that? Another thing you might have been doing wrong when playing football manager definitely if you're a beginner you might not know about this and even experienced players this only really came to light a little while ago maybe last year when we realized the real importance of this attribute but a lot of the time you look at a player you look at the attributes on the face of him here when we sign a player we might look at their personality their determination their potential to see if they're gonna grow and be a good player for us however a lot of people are ignoring the hidden attributes in the game and that is to be expected they are hidden attributes after all if you didn't know these are attributes that are hidden in the in-game editor that we can't see. I'll use the editor here to show you, but that's everything ranging from ambition to loyalty to how they deal with pressure, their sportsmanship, and a few others. But one attribute that we've found is really important over recent years is consistency. Now, this is on a rating of 1 to 20, and depending on where your player's consistency rating falls depends on how well they're actually going to play. But it doesn't work the way you might think. In fact, how consistency works is if a player has 20 consistency, he has a very high chance of playing to the attributes you see here. He won't play at a higher level than you might expect, but he would just play at a level that his attributes represent. Now, if we had a player with, say, 5 out of 20 consistency, it doesn't work exactly like this as a science, but let's say in 5 out of his next 20 games, he will actually play with the attributes that you see on screen. For the other 15, he's actually playing at a lower level than the attributes that you've got. So consistency is actually the ability to play at the level that his attributes suggest a player should do. So that's something you should note. Consistency is very 
important. But obviously you can't see that without the editor. So how do you sign consistent players? Well, we can see it without the editor because if we go to a player's report card, you will see either a pro or a con for consistency. It looks like a little target like this. If it's in the con section, he's got low consistency. If it's in the pro section, he's got high consistency. The darker the green, the better the consistency. The darker the red, the worse the consistency. If you don't see consistency, and that is a word that I've said too many times now, but if you don't see it in a player's coach report, that's likely because it's not notable. His consistency might be at a 9, a 10, an 11, a number where it's not really a big part of his game or a negative part of his game. So when you sign players, when you get a coach report, always take a look because if they have really bad consistency, even though that might adjust over a player's career, it might be worth maybe not signing him or at least taking it into account before you bring him into your club. So make sure you look at a player's coach report, take note of that, whether it's consistency, important matches, all of those things can really help a player in game. Take Oscar Perea here. He enjoys big matches. So in the big games, he's going to perform. Whereas if that was a con, then when it comes to the big games, it might be worth subbing them out, bringing someone else in. All of these things we should take note of. The next way that you might be playing football manager wrong is taking those young players that you have at your club, bringing them into your first team when they're not really going to get a chance. That's not necessarily the best thing to do. If you're going to bring them into the first team and give them five substitute appearances in the Carabao Cup or whatever it might be, it's probably not worth having them there. And in fact, it'd be better to send them out on loan. But of course, you don't always get the ideal loans. You're not often able to find the right clubs to take your players and you can't necessarily guarantee their game time. But this is where having an affiliate club comes in. It's very, very useful. And I'm going to show you how to get one here and why it's better for certain players. So if you have a look now at my dev center and go to the loan section, you'll see we've got a ton of players on loan. Whether they're going to make it in the first team or they'll be sold in the future, it doesn't really matter. But these are players players that are way better than playing at a Scottish under 21 level and should be getting first team football somewhere. So some players like Greg Hendry, never going to be good enough for us, but at least if he's getting game time, we can sell him in the future for a profit. Amel Selimovic here, also another one where he's not ready to play for the first team, but he's at the age now of 19. When a player's 18, 19, 20, it's way better for them to get game time somewhere than it is to rot in your reserves and just train. They'll kind of peak out at one point in your development center. So send them on loan to get them some game time. Semelovic here might end up being good. He might end up being bad. He's having a pretty good season so far in the second division of Scotland. So fair play to him. But you will see we've got a pretty big amount of players at Montrose, who is one of our affiliate clubs, and also Partick Thistle. Now this allows us to send players out that maybe we didn't get offers for. Let's take a player who's still at the club, Alex McKinnon. If we wanted to send him to an affiliate, we can go down here to the development section, if I can actually hover over it. Move to affiliate. You can choose either one. Let's say Montrose, because I've got two different affiliates in separate divisions. So if a player isn't good enough for the second level of Scotland, we can send him to the third. So if we click on Montrose here, we get this option come up and it tells us how likely he is to get game time. He'd be on the verge of getting first team appearances over for Montrose. And that might be a good place to send him because realistically here, he's not getting too much development. At 18, he's about ready to find some first team football. So this is a double way thing. One, make sure you loan your players out and don't just hoard them in your youth teams. They're going to max out just how much they can grow in those academies you want to get them playing first team football but two an easy way to get these loans is having an affiliate to do so go to club vision go to make board requests go down to networking i believe it is and then affiliate club here you can ask for an affiliate club you want to find one that allows you to send players out on loan considering our youth team does not play in a competitive league a sensible idea would be to loan many of the players out we therefore accept your request thank you. I'm going to help sort it out now. We're going to be able to choose a club. Sometimes the board will give you an affiliate. If you've been there long enough and they like you, they'll allow you to choose the affiliate club yourself. So I can have a look here and go, okay, let's take a look at Hamilton. You can take into account things such as their facilities, their training facilities, their youth facilities. Sol Campbell is the manager of there. So maybe we send it to Sol Campbell. Let's do it. Let's give Sol Campbell our affiliate to do so. Click on Hamilton, choose his affiliate club. The board will then try and sort that out for us. And then we'll have an affiliate with Hamilton where we can send our players out very easily to get them some game time. There's also the flip side to this. If you were Hamilton or a fourth division English team, third division English team, you can actually look for a feeder club from your affiliate. Let's say you're a feeder of Manchester City. Man City can send their players out on loan to you at no cost and you can have them in your team. So you could take some of their best young players to help you get promoted. And in general, if you are a lower down team like Hamilton, like a third division team in England, the best idea is to loan players in. Don't go out spending money on 
players because likely chances you'll spend a million on like a right back for the championship get promoted in the Premier League and realise he's nowhere near good enough anymore and that was a waste of a million if you just loaned a player in when you get promoted into the top division or whatever it might be then you can start spending money to improve your team if you've ever watched Zealand, he'll always say loans 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 until you get to this kind of elite level and I would definitely say the same thing particularly if you're a lower down team don't be spending any money get free transfers get players in on loan it's the best way to go about things but there you go that's affiliate clubs we've got one more thing to look at that you might be doing wrong when playing FM and it is kind of related to what we looked at a second ago in terms of asking for an affiliate club and it's using these board requests as often as you possibly can now when you ask for a board request it can't really go wrong you'll either get what you want or the board will say no and you just say okay no problem so at any point when these board requests are available whether it's improving your youth facilities your training facilities whether it's improving your junior coach and your youth recruitment as often as you can ask for these things and there's other things you can do too we don't have the option here right now because we've already done it this season but you can sometimes ask for extra scouts here so you can have more scouts at your club you can ask for extra coaches if you're a team where every time a player joins you they say we need you to improve the coaching team to sign then ask for more coaches sometimes if you have seven coaches and you have the best seven coaches players will still ask for a better coaching team because they want a larger one so go ahead and ask for coaches as often as you can we're going to do one here and see what the board say to it if the board say no it's not a big deal so let's go ahead and see what they say to the youth facilities i can show you an example here if they do say no of what you can do when the board say no here you go worst case scenario the board say no to you you can discuss now what you shouldn't do when you do this is never just threaten yourself to potentially lose your job never say i don't think i can stay here i mean we've won champions league with Aberdeen this is a save I used to use but I bet you if I click that they would potentially still want to sack me I always use this one it always has a pretty good chance of working for me we'll be left behind by some of our biggest rivals if this doesn't happen and after saying it they decided to grant a request there we go we have new youth facilities on the way so that's always something to bear in mind worst case scenario they say no to what we just clicked but this is a very easy way to improve your club improve facilities make it a more attractive prospect for players to join and make your life easier by having better staff members very easy to do and something that a lot of people ignore some people just do it at the start of a season the end of a season no check on it every few weeks see if you can ask for anything from the board and sometimes you'll get some things that can really really improve your club so there you go guys there's ways that you might have been playing fm wrong if you've been doing all of these and knew everything from consistency to star ratings to affiliate clubs then fair play to you you might just be a football manager expert but i imagine a lot of you didn't know all of these at least some of them hopefully you found useful if you did smash the like button subscribe for more check out my channel in the description now that we're done but most of all have a great day everybody and i'll see you next time thank you and goodbye